Okay, I work in, in the business of making up predictions, and then, as you know, uh, is everything about uh, uh, in making up predictions of the controlling and then making the errors which come from those predictions. And we're doing those predictions using finite element method. And finite element method is a method of solving partial differential equations. So we are working in the domain of the mathematics. This is human's kingdom. And in that kingdom, we can control the errors. We can estimate them. We can improve them. We can calculate the convergence, stability, and so on. So to have a full control over the errors. But there are other kinds of the errors, epistemic, aleatoric uh, errors, which come in with uh, uh, lack of knowledge on un uncertainties inherent in the material. Um, so what we try to do, we try to help people of making those predictions. And then what we try to do in addition, we try to develop research code, which can be applied, which is applied in the industry. So it's a part, it's creating a pathway to industrial application. So if you design the material, you are researchers and you design the material, material is useless when you cannot make a prediction of that material because you cannot design, you cannot optimize. So then what you really want to do, you want to sell the full package material with the model. And then when you will working with the research open codes, you can package as a one holistic solution. And this is exactly what industry needs. It's not needs a partial solution. Partial solutions are great to make a research publication, but the holistic solutions, this is what the industry needs. So then always the, at the end is an element of the prediction. And then we work in that business of the prediction and we'll try to help you with that. Um, 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 and various people. And then this is, um, I'm invited here. I did a little work uh, in this, but this was mostly done by the commitments of Ignatius and Andre, which heard about the problem and they tried to tackle it. But I will tell about a little bit about them. Oh, unfortunately, the slides were updated. So the <clears throat> MOPEM is a tool developed by Glasgow Computational Engineering Center. And it's a growing community and that the stability of that swap software and sustainability is coming that is supported by the institution of Glasgow Computational Engineering Center. And the key persons are Andre, Ignatius, Chris, Andrew, um, Carol, but there is, will be a more and there is a lots of other people which helping us, um, um, uh, postdocs which like, People start to being as a start to be a contributors like Adriana is now, but at, uh, at some point they will become a key uh, element of the of the team. Um, um, and then because this is something designed to exist for a long time, longer than me, when I will retire, I it's, it's uh, this this institution of the GCAC and MOPEM to exist, it has to be kind of the family. It has to be not only a pure science called one, it has to be some emotion behind it. So we have a, a, a great team, it's, it's good. We have a, we're going for a beer, we, we like each other and so on. We are kind of the family in addition. We're doing good research and we try to be a family. But why we need our open FE code, you're asking because you have onset, you have abacus, you have answer. Um, so then I will try to answer that. Uh, commercial codes pose barriers to research. Uh, so you, for example, you are asked to do consulting because someone, uh, some company may have this electric and then it's asking you to do a consulting of burying those properties. Can you use onset or abacus to do that? Rather not, because you have a very likely educational license. So you will bridge the license using a commercial code. Can you afford to buy a commercial license? Unlikely because the consulting is, is just not enough money there. So then, but if you will invest time in developing uh, uh, in, in working and working with the open research code, those barriers does not exist. 
you can make a full package. Even you can create a tool for them, which you, you can give them, and then then they uh, they will be addicted to you because they will require constant support from you because they will have to simulate more and more and more. I know that very well. Andre knows that very well. We're working with the EDF like that. And now with Ross, we're working with the uh, Royce Royce. So then when you when you embed the code in the company, this company and this good code, it start to be dependent on you. So we do, um, but we try to in addition interface with the school of engineering, with our school. So we try to, um, within the limit, the always the problem, uh, problem is Andre will say more about that. Is the human resources? They unfortunately has twenty four hours, and then we have to sleep in addition. Uh, uh, so, but we try to interface with the other colleagues, with them, with the, uh, like for example, with the indentation of the Salesforce microscopy, working with the Massimo, um, and, and then provide the tools for other groups. Uh, and that I think about that because when you're using commercial tools, they're, they're, you, you, you're facing the critical problems which you cannot solve with those because those tools, commercial tools, are designed in 70s and they have a data structures from 70s. But we're using the data structures from the 20th century, 21st century. Yeah. Um, so then we can do things better than them, potentially. So then modern research uh, codes, industrial challenges require novel distributed, uh, uh, destructive technologies and the prediction, ability to predict things better is the destructive technology. Uh, uh, and this is the examples. Uh, um, this is the example, which was about the incremental cost forming, how you make elements. Um, and when you, uh, 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 this is simulation from, uh, we working with AFCI, um, Advanced Manufacturing Center in, 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 in Glasgow um, on problems like that. This is another example of the problem, which is uh, like interface with School of Engineering. This is Andre work about the um, contact of two uh, rough surfaces. And then for the problems like tanks, when the estimation of the contact area is essential and it's classical formulation for contact uh, cannot make uh, accurate predictions. We develop really cool mathematics to do that better than anyone else. Legacy costs do not provide data structures. In, uh, 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 that sometimes when you you have idea, and then you can you you bend the code, um, uh, abacus, to do something. But you try to like make a hat, cut the corners, not really doing a slightly different that you intended to do because the code constrains you uh, itself. But when you invest your time and then commit to the open research code, you, you don't have to cut the corners. You can do exactly what you want, given a time and commitment. So, uh, so then there is a need to remove barriers to the adoption, of course, there is a problem. So then we try to, um, um, in Glasgow in particular, uh, we, when you, we, 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 we develop stuff like cloud computing that is very easy to collaborate with us, only at starting point to work with us when we have a running um, a module is just to have a web browser at the end because, and then you will be running somewhere your simulation in, in James Bath uh, on the server. What does MOPEM offer? It's a mesh-oriented finite element method, flexible ex extendable data structures, heterogeneous and hierarchical approximation orders. Why that is important? This is important to control the errors, to have a full control over the errors in this domain of mathematics, where we are like, in mathematics, humans are gods and they control everything. So then those, those uh, advanced uh, hierarchical bases allow us to control the errors, that we can increase the approximation lower at, 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 the, at the will. Um, commercial codes cannot do that. This is the example I will go over quickly. 
we can uh, have a bespoke basis, sometimes tailored from the problems that they approximate the solution. Uh, we can support heterogeneous meshes, so our code can run um, prisms, hexes, quads, triangles. You can mix them like in the commercial code. And then we have elements like prisms in addition. We can handle multiple fields. So then sometimes we have so maybe uh, we can handle thermo, elast, thermo, electroplastic problem. We can we can do multi-physics. You have seen even snapshot of a magnetostatic problem uh, uh, before. We have uh, this ability to adapt mesh and change into the simulation. This is um, a microfluidic device. When uh, you try to by you try to generate the bubbles, every bubble is kind of the chemical reactor. And in like every experiment, the fundamental thing is to control it that every experiment is the same. In that case, every bubble is the same. But this device not working well because we have one weak bubble and a tiny one. In addition, is created just the surface extension separated. Those things. But what I want to show you that MoFEM has this ability to adapt the mesh on the interface between the air and the fluid. And then we have uh, this uh, non uh, conforming approximation basis, which are as well not available to commercial codes. And then everything runs in the parallel so we can scale the solution. So, as I said, you can, I said that we are kind of the family, but as well, we are kind of growing a garden together. And there is a lot, lots of gardeners over here and then on, over the many years. This is a different modules and the branches developing the modem. We trim, we prune, we add the things together and then it's, it's a community thing. Yeah, we're doing that together. And then hopefully we're doing, we're doing that for over 10 years and hopefully we'll be doing that more. And then we hope that we will help us with that yes, in some way or another. Okay, so then, but we don't do everything from scratch. There is a lot of uh, other tools, but I will move over those things very quickly because I don't think so that we have so much time. And then, to, so then uh, what key applications of them of him? Uh, uh, MOFEM is used by EDF to predict cracks in nuclear reactors. Hunterson, not far away from us, but uh, practically every other nuclear reactor in the UK. And then we write the code for EDF because the commercial cost cannot solve those problems. They cannot predict the experimental um, uh, tests which were performed pre for EDF in Jacobs, so then they, they hired us. We compete with the other codes. We are selected in France, in, in Saclay near Paris, that was, Moffin was chosen as a decode for the prediction of the cracks in the nuclear graphite. And then uh, this code is running every day, even we have a discussion with Andre today in, in Jacobs. They have a dedicated uh, two servers now. They have a train engineers to run our code and they constantly validate it against the experiment. Based on the predictions, they decide uh, how long they can run, operate the reactor without the shutdown. When they do the shutdown, they do an inspection. And then they make a, so, uh, they make a predictions based on the predictions, they write the safety cases, which is they, they have to be approved by the uh, Office of the Nuclear Regulation Government. So it's a very serious thing when everything is based about, about quality of the prediction. When you cre can predict better for a longer time, then you can shut down the reactor less often. And the cost of shutting down the reactor for a day or uh, days is counts in the millions of pounds. And each time you're shutting down the reactor, you have to cool it down you have uh, uh, like thermal stresses and you, you, in fact, you fracture the reactor itself. So then prediction is, is, is controlling the life of the reactor itself. This is then what uh, I mentioned before. Uh, this is the repetition. This is 
uh, uh, hyperelectric nanogenerators that give generating um, electric charge as a result of the friction. Andre know much more about that and is working with the Daniel. And this is uh, as well, we try to face, um, we are trying to interface ourselves with the school because as a GCC through the MOFEM because this gives us stability. Okay, and then, so then you can, uh, you, you have seen that uh, before, you have uh, uh, this um, uh, very complex structure which has a lot of uh, rough surface. Um, and then uh, you, you, you make those two um, uh, surfaces in the contact. As a result of the contact, you're generating a, a, a charge, that charge uh, generating the electric potential, which you can harvest. But the amount of that charge depending on the contact area. So estimation of the contact area is the most important um, element to calculate and to predict. If you can predict, then you can optimize. So you can make it better and better devices. Um, this is another example. We're working on the uh, uh, identification of the parameters to, through the indentation on cells, soft matter, viscous matters. This is um, uh, with uh, working with the Massimo. We're working with the Massimo as well on the, uh, this is, um, uh, we saw the light intensity equations. We try to uh, simulate how the light is moving because then we can calculate phase and from 2D picture from the microscope out of and in uh, focus, we can calculate the depth because we calculate and identify the phase and then we can make a beautiful 3D images of the this is liver cell. Yeah, and all this code like this for the identification of the uh, or, or light intensity equation that uh, we can deploy at your laptop which in half an hour and then you can upload the images and then you can do uh, calculations. But we did uh, much more. I would just, uh, uh, we, we look uh, with the vet school at the bones in the horses, race horses, remodeling and then uh, fracture. Um, this is what you know. S a long time ago with uh, Manuel, uh, we work on the cell uh, force identification that you put the uh, you put the cell on the substrate. There is a bits in the transparent gel. You make a picture um, at the some focus plane, so you see a position of the bits at the some focus the inside of the material. They then you wash the cell and then you're making again the picture and then you see, you know the properties of your material and then you can ask yourself what the forces were needed to move those bits between those two pictures when the cell was seen there and not there and from that you can calculate the the forces yeah on the uh, executed uh, 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 from the cell. We're working on the big problems like um, ingots and uh, metal casting, and this is the thin, uh, uh, thin lead uh, uh, macro segregation. This is work which will pre prepare us to understand how you can cast um, uh, modular uh, SMR reactors, small modular reactors. Um, we work with the um, physics school as well, with Daniele Paccio on and this is a big work again, Andre. Andre is all the way down over here uh, about the photo uh, uh, photon diffusion that we, this is what you see. You see diffusion of the photons in the kind of the foam and how they moving. Whole analysis takes um, uh, 20, 25 nanoseconds, something about that. We even, look from 20 seconds scale to the scales like of the whole earth. And then this is the benchmark test that is a jet stream. And as a result of the Coriolis forces, you start to create the weather. Um, and then that is good test. This, but those those equations are, this is the half mind fault, but when you will, this is so-called shallow wave equations and then you can as well to calculate the, how the dam is breaking or things like that uh, with the same mathematics. So 
finite element is a method of solving partial differential equation. 